Welcome back to the podcast. I, well, I wasn't ready. Host. To the podcast, I am your host, Mr. Madeover. I am your host, Mrs. Madeover. And today's topic, I think we did pretty good on. Did we? I thought we did very excellent on it. You think so? Uh, for me to come back out, you know what I'm saying? Off the bench. You were sideline. I was sideline general, <laughs> is what I was coaching and everything. Um, but okay. I believe this topic will really help people with what they what they have going on. Right. Hopefully they will be mindful, mindful. of who you let in your square, right. circle, rectangle, or whatever it is. <laughs> Did you just cover all the shapes? Trying. Make sure people like something. I don't want to be square. I don't want to be circle. So I'm covering <laughs> all of that. <laughs> So, today we want you to tune in today, yes. and thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is me, Mr. Mo. And I, Mrs. Mo. Enjoy the podcast. Thank you, guys. So, but today's topic, we are going to talk about iron, sharpen, iron, and basically the importance of who you have around you. How important, how important is it <laughs> sorry the thought that went through my head that was so how important is it sorry growing up because we can relate this all the way back to childhood when i think me, me and my son was having a conversation today about who you have around you i think i'm gonna let you answer it let you divulge into it why because ladies first mm. <laughs> um how important is your surrounding and the people you have around you mm, and I'm the effect? Sure. I'm pretty sure I just crossed my eyes. I didn't mean to do that. Um, <laughs> how important, okay, one question at a time. So how important are the people around you, right? How? Okay, answer your, ask your question again. How important are the people around you or how important is it to have the right people around you? Let's kind of make that clear. Okay. Because you can have... We do this in the ELA <laughs> question, don't I? Mm-hmm. That like oh. answer, ask the question, right? How important... Your surroundings. Okay, how important... And who's around you? Okay. So, my surroundings. Those people who are surrounding me, how important are they? Your friends. Your I family. got a lot of them. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'm talking from childhood to now. What have you realized that, you know? I was going to say, man, these people ain't loyal. Wow. Okay. So. <laughs> That's fine. Come on now. All right. We talk about being real, right? People are not loyal. And when I say people are not loyal, that includes me. Wow. Okay, because at one point I was not the loyal person to like I wasn't loyal. Like you, I was not loyal. I was not always dependable. I was letting people down. That was the younger me. Mm-hmm. Tit for tat. Okay, so we when we are younger, we don't know the difference of what's the importance of having somebody around. It's just about how big can my group be, how big can my clique right. be. Right. It's not about you know. It's about you know, the popular, the not so popular, and the in-betweens. Mm. That's that's what it was made of. So what group are you going to fall in? I kind of fell in all of the groups, depending on the mood I was in and my attitude yeah. at, the, at the time. You, you had a choice to be in the group and out of the group? Yeah, I did. If you felt like it? Yeah, I did. Because that was just me. That was just me. That was just how I was. Because one day I could be feeling like, okay, I want to be in the in crowd. And actually... And that's a good, that's a really good movie. It's old, but there was a movie called The In Crowd, and it was like the popular kids. I was at one point in that group, and then I fell out of that group, and then I was like the outcast of the group, 
And then I had a whole nother set of people. And then I had like just, you know, man, whatever. None of y'all are whatever. And that's how that's the attitude that we take on when we're younger. So the idea of having people surrounding you for um, positivity, mm-hmm. there is no focus on that when you're younger. You just trying to have rack you up just, on friends. Yeah, you just trying to rack up on friends and make sure you're in the right group to, you know, you running in the right circle. I think the thing too is that when you're young, you're just trying to be accepted. Yeah. Like so you just you, you're running around to these different and a lot of times I, I know a lot of those movies start off with the cliche, but it's it it is so true. Like when you walk into a lunchroom, you got a table full of people here. <laughs> yeah, a table full of people here. Different tables of Different clicks. Groups. Yeah. Oh, and you have to choose. Where you gonna sit? Where you gonna sit? And where you choose to sit would determine how your school year is going to go. But see, for us, in high, like for me in high school, it was, I had a different group. Like some days I would sit with this group. Some days I would sit with that group. And we had a, we call, had a breeze. It was a breezeway. So basically like how they have the, the awnings with the sidewalks. Well, we had something like that in the middle, like split between the two buildings. So like you had one building here with the main school, you had the other building here with like the gym mm. and some other classrooms and like the auditorium. And in between we had our breezeway. So who you sat with or stood with in the breezeway, that kind of determined things too. So like these clicks, you know, you can bounce because you know, everybody, when you talk about circles back then, everybody didn't run in the same circle. Like you knew people because, I mean, we all went to school together, but we knew people, but it was not one of those things where we actually took into consideration, are this are, are these people good for me? Is this set, certain group of people good for me? Because there were some times where I had to be the bad girl. Wow. And then there were some times where I'm like, no, nah, I don't like her. And then there were some times where I'm like, man, I just want to be liked. Like, like the tables literally turn. And so then when I got older, it still kind of, you know, I had people who were loyal, but then that whole mentality changed once I got to college. Then that's a whole nother group. So I think for me, I was always the, well, it depends. In church, I was usually pretty popular again you the church boy. yeah I'm a church boy <laughs> but I was always probably because I played the drums I sung in, sung in a, in a choir so but outside of church I was the outcast like I was probably you probably catching me at the nerd table you know what I'm saying uh kicking it with what well, you table. did not <laughs> you did not I'm trying to tell you I, I mean, outcast. Like I was with, like matter of fact, those people you would see outside playing hacky sack. I was with those people. Wait, what is hacky sack? Explain to the people what hacky sack wow. is. Because everybody may not hacky even. Hacky sack thing we used to kick and you know Google it. It's like a little bean bag. Yeah, you just kick and pick it back, kick it back really? and forth. Yeah, You're so lame. <laughs> <laughs> The lame got you. So, uh, <laughs> what's that? Be too bad. Who played hacky sack? Person did was. you play kickball? Who didn't? Oh, I mean, you talking about hacky sack? I play cook, kickball, football, baseball, like. But with the crew that you hung with, that's what y'all played hacky sack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, rocking my crew, you know what I'm saying? Okay, no, now I question your crew jumping, hopping days. No, I didn't. <sighs> But at the end of the day, I realized back then that there's different cultures within these groups. Right. And it's a system set up within every group. It's crazy. I've been with the popular crowd, been with the not so popular crowd, been with the crowd like I just want I just want to be liked. I just want to be I just want to fit in. Can you please just accept please me? Please like me. Stop and being mean to me. Like I remember those days like going home and when nobody really didn't talk to me like I felt like my like the world was about to You're end. You're depressed. Like I felt like like Lord you might just go ahead and take me now cuz nobody me. likes me. I, I and I didn't get to that point. But yeah, I'm sorry. I probably, yeah. Yeah. I probably 
look, but you know what? Now that you say that, I probably didn't think it like that. I mean, but you're a church boy, so of course you're like, Lord, take me now. But I think for me, it just... <laughs> Ready to go home, Jesus. Beat me up. <laughs> You asking the Lord, take, take this. And I'm sitting here like, man, what can I do to amp myself up to be angry? Like, because I, like, but for you, it's taking me now. And for me, even though I, no matter what group I was in when I was younger, I still, um, I was still angry. Like, I still went home feeling empty because yeah. that group never did anything to me. So that, for me, it fueled anger. It fueled rage. It fueled a lot of other negative things. And then that attitude, like, my attitude was nasty. Well, I never had a, a nasty attitude. No, mine was nasty. Well, pro- well I went, when I got older... That's when my attitude got yeah. a little, not, 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 matter of fact, not only nasty, but I was aggressive. And I believe it was because, like, back then, I almost said they didn't want me, but it's true. Back then, they really didn't want to rock with me. Yeah, like, everybody's And, like, when I grew up and began to strike out on my career, like, Everybody wanted to be down. Everybody wanted the peace or, or, or wanted to be like in the circle then. So if I felt like you wanted to be in the circle, I felt like, okay. So then, so you, now you, 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 you gonna earn to be in this circle. So, but basically you ended up going from trying to fit in circles to where now you created a circle and people wanted to be in. I See, created I, an yeah. environment. Like, listen. Yeah. Not, I, I'm not going to you. You come to me now. Oh, see, and that was, and I think, but I, I mean, but to you, you had siblings. I was an only child, so I did put, like, I pushed people away. When I didn't want to be around anybody or didn't want to be in a circle, oh, I did good, things. Man. I did things. Sometimes deliberately, I'll be honest, sometimes I did things deliberately um, to push people away so I wouldn't have to fit in a circle because at, at, a certain point in high school, I just got tired of trying to fit in because no matter what yeah, I did, people looking didn't. Looking back, it was definitely draining. Yeah. I mean, and then like, <laughs> but then it became one of those things where I, but I think for me, it started even in middle school. I remember being um, in a situation where uh, I think that was when my mom was going through her divorce. And I remember feeling like nobody nobody loved me and I remember saying that like repeatedly like that was what was embedded in my in my head and that was fifth so what grade. you said about the divorce is what I said about people not liking me so it was kind of <laughs> like you know what do I do but then the flip side of that is um the older that I got some of the relationships that I I had with people um or friendships I had with people I then learned to cherish them but then it was still like a, uh, I just don't trust you because I just don't think that you are super loyal. But then I had to flip that on my side. Am I being loyal? And so it wasn't until what, maybe mm, this is, we've been doing this for eight years, mm-hmm. maybe like six, five, six years ago. Yeah. Like five, six years ago, like I really didn't understood what it meant. No, seven, because Araya is seven. I really then understood almost eight years ago. I really understood what it meant to have somebody loyal, what it meant to have somebody in your corner and then how that actually impacts you. Do you think you fully understand it now or do you think you're getting the gist of it? Um, I think now I, I have the gist of it to know exactly like to have a handle on it. Mm. So like, um, Still learning the ins and out of people because uh, trust has always been an issue for me. So having somebody that um, is around me that I can feel like, I mean, having someone that I can trust that is not going to be judgmental. And then also understanding that everybody that um, you are surrounded by cannot handle what you have to share or what you have gone through because they just don't understand that point. So I think that goes back with... um expectations yeah like i think for me coming up and sometimes sometimes you gotta do like a flashback on your life like i do i do flashback on my life to see number one thankful for where i'm at Mm -hmm. and to see 
different era of my ways. Like how did I how did I end up with this person? <laughs> or how did I end up in this with these group of people? And where was my mind at to actually yeah. be with this group of people? Right. Yeah. And it, it sums it up as this as as a person. I, I believe when you hurt, you look for a hurt crowd. Mm-hmm. When you, whatever your symptom what, yeah. is, like you, you are attracted to that, that. That's why a lot of times, even in relationships, mm-hmm. we are attracted to bro- broken people. Like right. if you're broken, you're like, okay, you're. Uh, uh, we got so many I mean, you're not going to say, are you broken? You're broken. Yeah. Let's be together. Let's yeah. be broke together. Do you have five bags? Because I got like that? five. And we got you know, ten. Like, like, but you, you try to find common ground yeah. as far as different other stuff. So. I think for me, when I think of iron sharpen iron sharpen mm-hmm. iron, like I don't think we think about the negativity of it. Mm-hmm. Like somebody can sharpen you to become a great person, mm-hmm. but then somebody can also sharpen, sharpen you yep. to become horrible. <laughs> Not that, so great. Cause, Cause for me, that's true. Horrible. Yeah. Cause for me, people sharpen me to become a real bad person. I had family yeah. members like, listen, only good chick is a new chick. <laughs> really? I never knew that. Y'all do not do that. That is <laughs> but, not. But that was right. me being sharp in the wrong way. Right. I was sharp, but it was truly the wrong way. But in my heart, I always wanted to be in a, uh, a, a, a full-time committed relationship for the most part. I was always Mr. Loverboy. You know, can't go nowhere because, you know, you, you're in a relationship. But it goes to show... Like I always tell people, if you show me who you hang around, I can mm-hmm. tell you your future. And and over the years, I'm talking over the years when I look back and I evaluate my 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 circle and I evaluate those people I was around, e- even my uh, relationships I was in. Mm-hmm. And I always say to myself, like. Did it did it benefit me any? It definitely benefited me because 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 I learned from them. Mm-hmm. I was the person that like when I look back now, I'm like oh, even though I was in that relationship and I'm not in that relationship now, this it doesn't necessarily have to be girlfriend boyfriend type of yeah. stuff. But I was just talking about relationship. Mm-hmm. A lot of us need to go back and just reevaluate. Right. Number one, where where was your mind at when you were in this relationship? Right. And then evaluate the relationship that you're in now mm-hmm. and think, okay, am I repeating the same the pattern. same thing? Because a lot of times we do that unco- like uh, unconsciously. Mm-hmm. We just constantly jump from as I mean, you said yourself, like I I, I went from the cool kids <laughs> to the cruel kids to the, <laughs> to the that you know you know these different crowds right. but i guarantee you each crowd has something yeah that, that it was doing to. right yeah and that's the thing too though like like you said if we don't reflect back like i'm able to now reflect back and say okay it wasn't this is where we have to stop playing a victim. So yeah. when we are in these things where you say, well, this person did that or they did that. Okay. But it's not always them. It's something that you also do because you participate. So you yeah. had a, um, you actually had a, a time or uh, a hand in it. So when it comes down to those things like that, for, for me, it's now as an adult, now as an adult, what what can somebody do for me to sharpen me in the right way? And then vice versa, what can I do? So it is really having to, one, you got to know yourself because if you don't know yourself, you're not going to, you're not going to be drawn to people that are positive. So you can be sharpened in the good way. We will always, like you said, from past history, from baggage from whatever we have going on mm-hmm. like if we're depressed we're gonna draw the depress- depressed kids and I, I mean the depressed people and speaking of that like even when like some of my students are talking about some of the things that they're going to mm-hmm. you can see you can see the like-minded ones flock together yeah and so day. it starts so young so this is where we have to start training our children about 
who are you around? What are they persuading you to do? Yeah. And you can say persuading. You gotta say, okay, they sharpening you the wrong way. They're not sharpening the wrong way. What are you talking about? No. Who are you? Pers- who are you around? And then what are they persuading you to do? Because that's the usually, same thing as iron sharpen. Like that's still sharpening. Each you can other. usually tell who your kid has been around somebody different because they begin to act yeah, different. They act different. Are they, they do things that? that yeah. It's always a sign that gives it away. Like I, like when my kid gets doing something, I'm like, okay, what YouTube have you been yeah, watching? Yeah, which that's the first thing we all <laughs> <laughs> who you watching this part, and we can call them out. But that's I mean because sometimes what we do have to also realize is sometimes the surroundings is what we see, what we watch, and it could be people like I mean like you said, our kids watch people that are you know for the most part their age mm-hmm. and or that have similar interests. But we gotta watch it because even those people. People can influence them or sharpen them in the wrong way. So it goes kind of hand in hand and, and definitely because we're in this virtual world, um, it's not so much uh, physical, you know, two physical people interacting or two people interacting physically. Now it's the social side of it. And so we got to be mindful of what are we doing? Yeah. Um, this I learned a new app this week. This yeah, I think it was this week, last week. I don't know, last week. But yeah, well, it's new to it's new to me, and I think it might be new to you. Uh, but it's called Discord, and it's supposed to be an app for people that game, like an area where like gamers go and talk and mm-hmm. connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, n- now the non gaming people are connecting with other people and creating houses, like everybody, like it, y'all. It's like a chat. It's like AOL chat in the twenty in twenty twenty one. AOL th- like think about that AOL chat in twenty twenty one. Like when I saw um, one of the students, I'm like, what is that? And she showed me how many like the when she just kept. I was like, what is this? Hmm. But when she told me, and then you can hear other people. Like talking about it, and I mentioned it in FCA because you know, I, since I do FCA, and I mentioned it, and the kids in FCA, they were like, "What's you that?" Tell people what FCA, FCA is. is Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, I am um, a co-sponsor or uh, a co-huddle coach, um, where we basically do like huddles with uh, athletes or non-athletes, and we basically teach them about Jesus. Oh, she thinks. Um, yeah, so that's FCA. But I was talking about it, and so the kids like, I don't know what that is. So, and then one girl, she said, Oh, I know what that is, and she said, Yeah, and I'm not getting on it hmm. because it's meant for one thing, but now it's been tailored, and so like the word is passing. So as the word is passing, I'm sharpening you, and I'm telling you this is what it's used for. You pass it on, and somebody else. So at some point, like this little girl, I was proud of her, and I said, So you better not get on it because then I'm gonna tell your mama. Uh, <laughs> I did. Um, But like the fact that she knew what it was and that she should not be on it because of what it did, Mm -hmm. that made me feel like, okay, you know what? So us teaching about, you know, about Jesus through FCA is actually resonating with some of these kids because she know what it is and she could have, she could have gone on it. So that means somebody positive is sharpening her in the right way, whereas her peers may be on it and being sharpened the wrong way. And that's what's happened happening with our youth through social media. And I think that's why we as um, adults mm-hmm. should be aware. Not we we should be so in tune to what's out there because mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell you it is some stuff if you if you thought I mean just think back in the day when you thought you were pulling something <laughs> over your mom or your parents <laughs> we weren't doing nothing like that <laughs> now you gotta sift through some stuff you now. do and because they know how to hide it like, like you can't be naive to the point yes. like, like me that's why I'm so curious and interested in anything that my kids do oh yeah. what's that because I don't want to be out of the loop. I don't want to be that old person yeah. that don't know what's going on up under their right. roof. And and I mean, and you do that on that side, but because we have young kids, you know, well, teenagers and a preteen and smaller kids, that's why for me in my profession, when the kids are talking about something that is in, that's why I'm like, what's that? Hey, babe, t- you know, I don't know what that is. What's 
come here. And they share. They share, and I just literally let them know, like, okay, now, if you say something, you got no business, I got to report that. Because I'm a mandated reporter. But other than that is teach me. Make me knowledgeable so then I know how to handle it. And I can tell the next kid that might be thinking about it, hey, don't do that because that's not good. Oh, I know what that. Because anytime I have a conversation with them and I'm telling them, hey, I know what that is and you you shouldn't even be on there. Yeah. And they look at me like, ooh, she know about that. How you know about that? Don't worry. I say kids. And I tell them, I say kids talk. And I say kids talk around me because they it's a safe place. So that's part of that iron sharpening iron too. Yeah. If I'm not a safe place, then I'm not going to know what's going on. And at least if the kids aren't talking to their parents, at least I can kind of guide and nurture in the right way. So then they're being sharpened in the right way because yeah. we don't know exactly what they're dealing with. And, you know, so it's, you know, kind of hands on, hands off. But... That's more hands on, way, though. yeah. More hands on because I, I mean, we come from a generation where we believe in the village, and the village is going to take everybody, including the teacher. Yeah, and I know for me, at the beginning of the year, and I encourage everybody to do this. Um, at the beginning of each year, I always type in on YouTube top five favorite apps. Mm. I'm trying to tell that. I do. These kids ain't trying to pull the wool over my eyes. Uh, But like, it's a list. In nine out of ten, it's more than five. And it's and it's going and it changes. You and some of it changes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, or some of it is enhanced. Technology. When I tell you now, if you do not get ahead of it or be with it, I'm trying to tell you, you you your (laughs) kids will be doing something up under your nose, and you'd be like, like that's why after I search that. I always turn around and search, okay, what is the best parental app? What is the best, you know, this app? Right. Or, or like, 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 it has to be something, like, it's always a counter to those apps mm-hmm. that you feel like, you know, I don't really trust my kids. Mm-hmm. So, I'm a, and the crazy part, it's not about not trusting them. Right. It's about knowing. Right. What type of gun you're putting in their head. Right. You put too much freedom in their head, I'm trying to say they're gonna be just like you, but yeah. nine times ten, a whole lot worse. And I mean, and if we don't sharpen them ourselves, then society's gonna do it. And All you already time. know. I mean, you see. Yeah. They're, like, I mean, we a lot see of, where we are. A lot that. of our young people are already sharpened by society. Oh yeah. Which which is why they don't have that much identity. Right. And it, and if you look at there's a difference between their society and our society because people sharpened us and we're still yet as adults trying to find identity. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us are walking around with no identity. We like we don't know who we are. Yeah. We haven't discovered who we are and the crazy part is we have accepted not mm-hmm. even discovering who right. we are. So you can't get mad at your child because the child is doing exactly what they see the parent do. At the end of it all, Uh we have to be careful of who we are surrounded by. The one thing that I've learned as an adult is, well, you taught me that too, um, is that I need to be mindful of the type of people that I have around me now because it is about... um, preserving energy, preserving mental, emotional, physical, spiritual health. Um, And it's about what people can pour into me and what I can pour back out. So um, when you have people that are only sharpening to get something out of you or to get something from you as a benefit, but then there's nothing coming back, then that's a, that's a relationship that you have to question. And that's us as adults. And then that's us as, you know, millennials. Mm-hmm. Um, that's us as Gen Z, like wherever you are in the stage of your life, that is what you have to do because the old saying birds of a fl- feather flock together. That is so true. Who you hang around, it will, it will manifest. It will show itself. And so um, you really don't want to be in a situation where, um, you know, you, you're getting sharpened, but you're getting sharpened and you slice and stuff and is nothing but nastiness is nothing but evil is nothing but ill intentions. Um, so we have to make sure that we are making sure our iron, 
our, our, our blade is sharp with the right stuff and with the mm -hmm. right tools first and then so that we can go and sharpen somebody else with the right things don't sharpen it i mean if you, if you bitter and you you know you angry and you know your boyfriend or your husband or whoever made you mad and then old girl come to you with the problem and you ready to sharpen her nah boo check your blade and put that thing away let it stay dull don't try to sharpen her because then you're pouring negativity into into that person's life and vice versa if it's a man you're pouring negativity when what you want to do is be able to uplift that person but you can't do that if you're coming from a place of nothing good of, of rottenness and also relationship to me is a two-way street mm -hmm. <clears throat> like you can't always be the person that's always giving you got to be like the same love has to be love in return to that's how relationships like I shouldn't always have a hand out mm -hmm. and I shouldn't always be asking because mm -hmm. that's how a relationship build. I mean, like you, you, you supposed to be there for that person. That's why I question today's loyalty in relationships. And that goes across the board from marriage to whatever mm -hmm. I begin to question. And I think moving here, I always say y'all built different down here, but I'm, <laughs> begin I'm beginning to think that loyalty is not what loyalty is. Yeah. And it's if, what it's meant to be. And if you look at, um, the world and where it is now, I think I was watching, I, of course, I'm always, uh, surfing through YouTube and they were going through, you know, crazy with, with this, this topic and talking about rappers who passed away, mm. who were set up by people in their own crew. <laughs> when no I man. tell you, These be mindful. <laughs> and it's famous rappers that y'all know, like they, 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 who literally set them up. The setup. I mean, but we. I mean, but you know how. I mean, you know how I feel about rappers. They just, you know, people that got a little bit more money, a little oh, more perks than we. But up. they just, you know, the but same. Be mindful. Like I said, be mindful who 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 you surround yourself with. Yeah. Be but mindful I mean, they're human, you. just like we are. But we, like, that says so much, though, because even. And I mean, and and the reason why I was saying like I'm not a I've, I'm not a starstruck person. I see the stars for who they are. They you know they just got I tell you they just got extra perks that we don't have right now. Um, but we had like if if somebody in their own crew can be disloyal to them, what makes us think that everybody's loyal to us though? Yeah. Like and and it's the history. Like, or if your friend is not loyal to this person or, or you see this girl, I mean, and, I, and I'm talking on like, you just, you know, female stuff too. But like, if, if I see, you know, sister Samantha down over there, Samantha. sorry, Samantha, if you're listening to this, um, okay. Sister guacamole, let me change sister it. Guac. Sister guac, you down. <laughs> down there and she not doing sister salsa the right way what make you think she gonna do you tortilla the right you, that sound good huh? she not gonna do you the right way either because she's already disloyal and we watch that and then we still go after the person that is not loyal to us yeah. or we still go after the person that we know that they don't have loyal loyalty as a characteristic and this is where we have to kind of like you said we have to check ourselves so it, it goes right back to it if you got rappers or singers or people in the industry and their own people are setting them up like people that they're supposed to be hanging crazy your cook set you up what man you supposed to be flipping burgers and like it's great because you get what i'm saying you understand like because your je finance jealousy person. jealousy is a is a is a a crazy thing because it make you do some of the most craziest thing. I always th think about Selena. Yes, I was. That's what I was thinking about. Like yo, yo, because yo. it's crazy. Like you gotta understand. Like be aware of your surround. Like I'm always. Like I'm always 
reevaluating. Like, you know how they do the 90 days reevaluation at a job? He I'm does. the same way as far yeah, as he do relationships. A weekly. He do it weekly. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to tell you, cause, because at the end of the day, like, you had, like, and especially with me, like, I have girls, I have, mm-hmm. I have a whole family. Mm-hmm. And for someone to set my whole family up because I wasn't cautious of who's around me, yeah. Don't don't get it twisted, cause yeah. because you can always tell. And you're really, I mean, and you're really good about that. I mean, as far as just even with me put it, putting into perspective what you have seen when it comes down to people that I'm surrounded by, oh. um, and I mean because you know sometimes we wear our feelings on our sleeves and we wear our hearts on our sleeves. So we want to have everybody in it. We want to, you know, make sure everybody's good and make sure they have, but you know, you do a really great job of keeping me. I mean, you know, mom always called you my anchor. And so you keep me from floating up. You, okay, babe, like you need to cut back. I mean, even I think just, because as a, as a person who is head of the house, like yeah. I have to see further than, yeah. you know, because what I see some things like to me, it's just like, hold up. First of all, I'm a people watcher. Yeah. I study people like more than what people like. That's, that's why and it's not creepy. <laughs> Because my cousin gave me this one thing because I, for some reason, I, for some reason, like I said, I wanted to be liked so bad. And I never understood why people did me wrong because for the most part, I'm loyal. Mm -hmm. I'm loyal to a fault. Mm -hmm. And my cousin gave me the, I mean, the wisest information ever. He said, man, you just got to know people for people. Yeah. And ever since then, I've watched people. I don't pay you attention do. to the words because you can tell me anything. Yeah. But then the act, like when they say actions speak louder than words, yeah. you got to watch people's actions. Yeah. And you, I mean, that's why I say you're really good when it comes to that type of stuff. I am the, hey, everybody. Hi. That's me. And he like, nah, let me let me yeah, see what cool. my wife is, you Let's know. Let's hit the reverse on that. Yeah, them. let me see what my, yeah, <laughs> nah, babe, that ain't, man, really? But, you know, and that's the, but that's the thing, because not that you're not friendly, but I am usually the face of the family for the most part, and I usually make sometimes the first connections, especially when it comes down to, like, the business stuff that we're doing. Is, you're out here. Yeah, because I'm, I'm out. I'm out in these COVID streets with fully vaccinated. Oh, by the way, yeah. fully vaccinated. Fully vaccinated. And still masked. Still yeah. masked up and sanitizing and wiping stuff down with Lysol and spreading it down. But I'm the face of it, and so when I make a connection, the first thing that I do is I come back here and I say, "Okay, babe, this is what we have, or this is what I did, or this is who I'm talking to, or hey, check out this page." And if it's not something that he feels is going to sharpen us in the right way or is not a like that connection needs to stay at a a cordial hey Mm -hmm. then you know he keeps me level headed to where I'm not doing more or pursuing more or giving I say uh, more giving of myself me sharing my loyalty because I'm loyal, I'm loyal to a fault as well but my loyal to a fault can sometimes be detrimental to me and then I end up you know yeah, because you don't know how to hit reverse. Yeah, and I don't hit reverse. You'll I stay just, there and be like, huh? I just hit the gas. What? And I put in park Excuse and Excuse me? What? what? Yeah. I'm like, man, let's get out of here. Yeah. He like, all right, I'm in reverse. I'm gone. I'm like parking. Yeah. Like, do I drive? Do I back up? What do I do? But that's, I mean. But like you got to have that, that yeah. number one, that, that spirit of discernment. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, <laughs> Holy Ghost will tell you, like, hmm. No. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. You don't want you don't want that trouble. But I mean, and two, I mean, and that's that's good to pinpoint when it comes down to that. Because it's not that I don't have discernment, but you know, sometimes I'm like, babe, let's just give him a chance." And he like, "No, nah, mm, no chance." But I, mm, no, nah, okay. But I can see. But he just basically shines the lights on to where, like, it doesn't. I, guess, no, I can't even say blow my head up, but where I don't get too caught up. Yeah. 
because I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm always eager of opportunities, but I've learned to run my opportunities through the head of my house, which also who sharpens me. So he sharpens me in areas and vice versa. But I know that there are certain things where he's a little bit sharper than I am. So I have to like bring it and he sharpens. We should have had like and in my mind. As, 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 mm-hmm. as, That's as husbands, yeah. you better be sharpening your wife. <laughs> I get sharper all the time, y'all. Like, who's sharpening me? God. <laughs> I, <laughs> Being at well, my spiritual father. He, yeah. He's always sharpening me. He's always yeah. keeping me uh, abreast to what's what's out there. Um, we have great conversation mm-hmm. on like I'm always being sharpened, whether it's from him or older people. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, people are always. I'm a matter of fact. I love when people are giving me information on what to do because. Right. Ultimately, they've been here longer than me. Yeah. They have more wisdom than me. So they've been through what I've been through probably 10 times more. Right. You know, so I, I, I love my surroundings. And a lot of people are like, why don't I hang around, you know, this certain people or that you know, certain people. You're old fogey in the like, I'm always hanging around older people because. Yeah. They're fun. They got more sense. <laughs> and they're fun and they have great stories. Yeah, and I'm trying to and go And they're not somewhere. full of drama. You know, like, so. And Did that's, I say that out loud? That's just, I mean, it's true though. And that's just where things are right about mm-hmm. now with me. Like, I, I'm trying to go to a different height, different yeah. levels, and I can't do that as a person I hang, hang around so you can't, you're not supposed to do that you're you can't only- fly with eagles hanging around with ducks you know <laughs> so um uh but that is truly this this the 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 end of this podcast no. I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far um like I said we are back and we are switching our podcast time to every Friday now. That's right. I want to give you something to go into the weekend um, yes. to help you get over it. We might drop a full review somewhere in between and those two, you know, Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday, maybe mm-hmm. Monday, depends on. But we will be uploading content for you to enjoy. And okay. for those who are driving in the car, we driving, in the, driving car, in the car, thank you for listening to us <laughs> uh, on all our platforms. Yeah. Man feel pretty good be back in the chamber um you're so loud man yeah, whatever you're not loud <laughs> so <laughs> you say like 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 that's new i know that's but it, funny like part. i'm not jumping but it's like making me tingle still i know can i just be me yes i'll let you be you no, not. yes i do so um let's see this is the end of this. Like we always say around about this time, keep God first. And the, and the rest, rest will be added. added. Thank you for watching.